Hello, hi. My name is Alex. Uh, thanks for the introduction. I'll present to you today, uh, on one hand, fun, but really I want to talk a, a bit broader about Wi-Fi and what Wi-Fi does uh, to the telecommunications industry. Uh, who of you knows fun? A few people in general. Uh, I guess in Spain we're pretty well known uh, because we're a Spanish company. We consider ourselves a Spanish company. Uh, having said that, our footprint in Spain is relatively, is yet to come, okay? Uh, so what does FON do? We are uh, a company who builds Wi-Fi networks. We create, created the world's largest Wi-Fi network, and we created that by a sharing concept, and I'll explain to you in a second of how that works. But the history of FON is really very much the history of uh, Wi-Fi as well. Uh, we started in 2006 at a time when, uh, when really we're, that was a pre-iPhone era. Okay? Nobody knew what, uh, what really, everybody had laptops only, nobody had actually a view of why would anybody use Wi-Fi on the go. Uh, Wi-Fi already existed before, I mean the standards were defined in, two, in 99, uh, but really the, the usage of Wi-Fi other than connecting at home with your laptop or at work with your laptop really changed with, uh, with the iPhone. Uh, that came 2.7, we started 2.6, at the end of mid of 2.7 uh, the iPhone came. Uh, we totally shifted our company from, from really being more focused to laptops towards uh, more focused on, on, on smartphones and on the iPhone. And for us it really meant there's a post Wi-Fi uh, or, or new era of Wi-Fi. It's been a long time since then. We've been around for now since 2.6 we started, we really launched the first product in, in uh, late 2.6. Uh, it's been uh, eight years now, where what we've done is we've created a community of Wi-Fi. But the need is still the same, or the, the, the concept that we had back then is still the same as, as today. The problem of Wi-Fi is, as it's wonderful because we all use it all the time, and it's fast, and, and it's faster than 3G and faster than 4G now even, uh, the problem of Wi-Fi is that it's usually locked to our personal use, right? So that was the concept of fun, and still is the concept of fun, that uh, what we want to do is we want to open up all the existing Wi-Fi that we have for our personal use and open it up for a community use. And uh, we've started with that concept with our own hardware, but, and we evolved, but this, the concept is pretty much the same thing. What we do, the way you can join fun, or the way we have created the network of people who share Wi-Fi, is um, that... Um, you share your home Wi-Fi. Initially, you did so by installing a phone router into your, into your existing home. You buy a router, you install it. The Wi-Fi router would send two Wi-Fi signals, one for yourself, the signal that you have already, and one for the community. Okay? So when you share, everybody else gets access to the community as well. And when I heard before Airbnb, sharing economy, I'd almost dare to venture out and say when Martin, as he was introduced before, the founder of the company, when we came up with, with that concept, it was really a pioneer of the sharing co economy. We're about sharing Wi-Fi, only a part, not about sharing a whole house, only a part of your personal belongings at home, Wi-Fi, and we do so in a very secure way. Uh, we do it with a separate Wi-Fi signal. We do it that your own private Wi-Fi signal is always prioritized, and when somebody connects to your signal, nobody can get into your personal data. Or if there's a problem, I mean, you might have heard about incidents when somebody uses your Wi-Fi and does something bad with it, we can identify the bad people and identify the bad traffic and block it if needed. Uh, so we've evolved since then, but at the beginning we only did that by, by ourselves. People would go on our web page and buy a Wi-Fi router. That did not work out very well, to be honest. We did that for a couple of years and, um, and then we decided, well, actually, there's a big hurdle for people going online and purchasing a piece of hardware. I come later back or we have something here where we have a hardware again, but what we, this, we evolved to basically saying let's do this a software upgrade. Okay? Software upgrade for existing routers. That in most of the cases only works with, uh, with uh, routers 
that are controlled by telcos. Okay? But in Europe, the infrastructure is such that 85% of the routers that people have at home, right, of the Wi-Fi routers, are given by the telco or cable operator. So what we did is we adjusted our software such that we can upgrade existing routers. Uh, we worked with the, now with the biggest telcos of, of Europe. Uh, we have 14 million hotspots alone. Last year, we added 4 million, uh, or in the last 18 months, I think 4 million. We've had, the, really, the peak of the growth has been in the last two years. Uh, I love the name of this conference, right? and I love being here because I think, really, uh, I think four years from now, we're going to be at 100 million. Right? Why? Because we have all these telco partnerships. They work with us, and all they need to do in order to make our network grow is deploy our software to more routers. So we have now partnerships in Europe, in Latin America, and in Asia, in Asia, uh, in Japan, Korea. And what we do in these partnerships is we work with a large telco. And I'll take one of the examples here that you see. Let's take uh, uh, Proximus, which is the Belgian incumbent, Belcom uh, before. Uh, we work with them. We work with the telco and we tell them, look, you have an existing date an existing base of a lot of routers, it's kind of silly just to have them sitting there and giving Wi-Fi only to the owner of this household. Why don't you join the phone community? And by day one, that person that is, has his DSL from Proximus will get access to 40 million hotspots, growing to 50 million along with the, with the deals we have. 100 million, that's our aspiration. And Proximus does that. And they, by default, software upgrade their existing routers and what happened there in 2012, I think, or 11, when we launched, overnight, we basically lit up the whole country with Wi-Fi. That's not locked down to your personal use, but that is open for use for the community. Okay. Uh, so what does it look like? This is an example of Paris, where we work with, with a telco, where um, the coverage, it's hard to see here, but if you zoom in a little bit, well, this is all Zoom faces. You will see that, okay, this is pretty, it's pretty, <laughs> and it's a pretty dense, I don't know where this is stuck. Oh. It doesn't like this chart here. I'll try to go back. Okay. This is a level where you see already. That's Paris. London looks the same. Lisbon looks the same. Pretty much every French city looks the same, or every uh, Portuguese city looks the same. In London, the same thing. This gives you a feeling for what density we have of Wi-Fi. Right? And the Wi-Fi that we have here is uh, the way this works for a phone member. You have a phone. You install the phone app, which is a connectivity app. You walk through the street of, of Paris here, and that's close to uh, Georges Pompidou, so pretty, pretty central area. And you will be able to connect to each one of those hotspots automatically. Right? Your phone is configured one time, and you walk through the street, and you connect automatically. Now, why is that relevant? Right? Clearly, we all have already 3G, 4G, so that's fast enough. And the whole conference is about how fast 4G is, and how next generation, and how, how, how amazing that, that deals with traffic, but the reality is a lot of the traffic, and I'll show you that later, goes through Wi-Fi. Right? So th the, the point of fun is that we built a network really to deal with heavy, heavy data, right? video. Most of it is video. I think a third of the US traffic over the internet is Netflix. We deal, not that we choose which traffic people would take, but people by default take the fastest connectivity when it comes to really heavy data uh, applications and, and, and services, and then Wi-Fi is the best. Right? It's video and gaming that is killing mobile networks, and while there's billions being spent in, uh, in 4G networks right now in Europe, we deploy an approach that is very low cost because it's all existing infrastructure, it's all existing Wi-Fi, and all we do is we put a layer of software on top of it so people can connect to it. We make it available. Right? We built a crowdfunded, or crowdsourced, not crowdfunded, crowdsourced, uh, wireless network built by people who share their Wi-Fi. But we do it together with telcos, okay? That's been the approach, and that's been um, the success approach. Why do the telcos work with us? 
why do they think, and then the conference is about telcos, and we're obviously in a lot of discussions there. They work with us because we give them something that their competitor don't have. Right? We, we help them to differentiate their service. We give their customers something in addition that otherwise they wouldn't get. So a Bellcom customer is a happier customer because he has Wi-Fi at home and he has Wi-Fi on the go. We, in Europe, in, in terms of expansion, we will have a similar coverage in pretty much every European city in the next three to four years. We're convinced about that. Why? Because we have partnerships signed, we work with telcos, it's a working service. So we'll, we'll have a great network. Now, many of you might ask themselves, though, well, but I'm not really using it. Why, you know, especially in Spain, I've come across a lot of people who don't, because we don't. Here we have a couple thousand hotspots. Why? Because we haven't rolled up with a telco. We're working on that. Uh, but the use case really for Wi-Fi, and that's where the 4K for now, and I come back to that, is a really useful title for us as well. Phone will grow in parallel with Wi-Fi, and Wi-Fi is unstoppable with the traffic demand that we have on our devices. Let me just share some stats with you. So today, two-thirds or 70% of the iPhone traffic, of the iPhone traffic, right? and I've heard a number that's a lot larger than that from a US uh, uh, senior executive who actually is responsible for the rollout of the iPhone, and he said over 80% of their iPhone traffic goes via Wi-Fi. That's a device with a SIM card. It's a device with a SIM card that is rolled out where people actually use it most of the time via Wi-Fi. Well, why? Faster. Right? Most of them use it at home, no doubt. Right? But we want to make the same experience that you have at home with Wi-Fi on the go with Wi-Fi. Now, that's devices with a SIM card. 93% of the tablets that are being sold right now or next year, I think, are Wi-Fi only. That's I mean, we're here at the Mobile Congress, and it's obviously it's a lot about license spectrum and a lot of, about using uh, technology that is very, very well developed. But there is what we use in our everyday life, Wi-Fi, and it's just an incredible, powerful technology where usage is only going to go up. Some more stats. 214 last year, this year, more Wi-Fi-enabled devices than people on the planet. I guess 6.5 billion. I've I don't count that. I know that for next year, next three years, that's going to double. Another 7 billion. Okay? Why? It's not only phones, and that I think is, is very, very important for, 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 for us all. It's not, we see tablets are being sold to end use to a large extent without a SIM card. But there is tons of devices that don't even have a screen, okay? Internet of Things, that don't even have a screen, that definitely don't have a SIM card, that want to get into the Internet. Billions of devices are going to come onto the market, and you'll see a lot actually at the World Mobile Congress as well, that need internet connectivity, the connected devices, but that do not have uh, a SIM card. The connectivity of choice there is, there is of course Bluetooth, but the internet connectivity of choice is Wi-Fi. I don't fully, that's, I think this means there's a lot of traffic. <laughs> there is going to be a lot. Of, there's going to be 17.3 exabytes, uh, 35,000 times the whole YouTube uh, library in terms of traffic over Wi-Fi. It's a lot, <laughs> but I guess I guess it's out of question anyhow. And faster. I mean, it is right now. I'd say the average speed varies a lot across different countries. Right? That is something where, where, and we see it ourselves as well. We have unbelievable speeds of our Wi-Fi uh, in, in Korea, right? in Japan, where the fiber rollout is just much more advanced. Okay? We also have completely different use cases there. We have a lot of gaming in Korea in general because that's, that's, that's what people use there on the internet. Uh, in Europe, I'd say we're, we're moving towards the fiber, and it's a, it's, it's a catch-up game. I mean, if you look at the last one I show you, history, it's really a catch-up game between technologies. There's the mobile technology, who's going from 3G to HSTB, 4G LTE, a lot of different standards coming up, and my main purpose is throughput and speed. And at the same time, on the fixed side, we're doing the same thing. We're going from dial-up to 500K to a meg to now 100 megs being available in a lot of parts, okay? 100 megabits per second. 
And Wi-Fi is always as fast as the underlying technology, uh, the underlying backbone. Uh, hardly ever uh, there's a limitation that comes from the Wi-Fi. It's usually from the backbone. And we, it's beyond one gigabit per second. That's interesting as well in terms of how, uh, I guess, if I ask around here who is using Wi-Fi, I'm 100% certain that all of you used Wi-Fi today. Ah, in the last two days, maybe today has been a bit difficult here. Uh, in the last two, three days, uh, study says, the survey says, that 75% of the people would be grumpier without Wi-Fi over not having coffee. Um, I don't know. For me, both make me pretty uneasy. So what's key trends in Wi-Fi and how, how do we see this evolving and the, the addressing some of the things that we see now in the everyday life, okay? There's one thing that's a standardization topic. Uh, hotspot 2 is a, a very generic term for addressing a lot of things that, that, that address the Wi-Fi uh, limitations, let's say. Right? One of those limitations is that um, how do you log on and off? Right. We see people logging on and off. We, we make it very easy by installing a connection manager onto people's phone. Uh, but that's still an app running on the phone. The wonderful thing about LTE and 4G and the whole uh, license spectrum mobile industry is, is that the user doesn't need to do anything. Completely seamless. Okay. Hotspot 2 will bring us a step closer to that completely seamless experience. That annoyance that we all have is when you connect to the Wi-Fi, but it's just really, you know, like you're too far away to have the great experience, but you're still clinging on to it. That will be addressed with, with Hotspot 2, with Passpoint. We do all some, some things on our side ourselves as well with our connection manager. But take it for granted that that annoyance of you're connecting to Wi-Fi and you have a poor experience or worse experience than on your LTE, that's going to go away. Right? We're, the industry is as a whole working on this. It's going to go away that you say, oh, I'm connected to Wi-Fi, but my LTE will be a lot faster. There is a lot of discussion around who takes the decision. How do we take the decision of which do I connect to LTE or to, to Wi-Fi? Uh, it's a matter of cost as well, right? It's a matter of do I connect to something for free versus do I use up my mobile data plan? Fun is for free for the ones who share, so it's, a, it's an easy choice for a fun member. But maybe for other users, it's not such an obvious choice of, you know, I prefer to have speed over, over uh, cost. Another buzzword but it's more than the buzzword now, is uh, Wi-Fi first and Wi-Fi uh, calling. It's, I mean, it's, it's, not, it's actually not a big deal in terms of <laughs> technology. Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi calling is a, is a technology that you could say has been around for a while, but it's, if you look at what T-Mobile is doing in the U.S., of how they market Wi-Fi calling, uh, it's a pretty revolutionary step in terms of how operators looked at Wi-Fi, how mobile operators looked at Wi-Fi. Right, Wi-Fi calling is not like Skype only, and there's a disclosure, Skype is an investor in phone. Wi-Fi calling is actually really fully embedded into the most user experience of a mobile phone. Right? So if you get a phone from, let's say, T-Mobile US, and it's Wi-Fi calling enabled, you have a phone number, and you're in the basement, and no cell coverage, okay, you still get the phone call the same way as if you were connected to the mobile network okay, through Wi-Fi. The same way when you travel internationally. Right? Suddenly, there is no international roaming. There's no international mobile operator engaged into, this, into the termination of the call because you make your phone call in the US through a Wi-Fi network. In Europe, let's say you're a US customer, you're in Europe, you make it through the Wi-Fi network, and it's actually transparent for you in which network you are. Um, there is, related to that, there is more and more Wi-Fi only or Wi-Fi first MVNOs, but it could be Wi-Fi only MVNOs as well. So mobile operators that, that basically say, look, you know, we heard 93% of the tablets use Wi-Fi only. Well, there is a market for MVNOs to use Wi-Fi mostly or only as a backbone for the connectivity. Uh, and the last trend is the one that I want to elaborate a little bit more on, and that uh, that's, that's goes into the core of what FON is working on again. Wi-Fi is a great connectivity tool, okay? Now, I hope I convinced you, but I didn't need to. Uh, it's about getting faster internet access. But the other thing it is, it's just so much more powerful when it comes to what do I do with the information when somebody's connected. 
So I'll introduce you to two concepts that Fon is working on, and you can actually go out and, 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 and test them as well. And both are in, a, in an area of where we think Wi-Fi will, in the next, let's take four years, still revolutionize of how we do business, or not just business, how we, how we interact with people over Wi-Fi. So the one thing is connectivity. It's going to be faster, and there's going to be a lot more. The other thing is, what do we do with it? OK, so one setting, think of stores, businesses, cafes, restaurants, doctor offices. Okay? We think, not we think, we know. Okay? There's, what you do with Wi-Fi is, not only do you connect people, you know who is here. Right? You know our phone is constantly prompting for a Wi-Fi connectivity if it's turned on. So that allows a lot of things to be done with that information. Once you connect, we have the information that you're connected at a certain location. So one of the things that, 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 that has been around for a long time and that's, I'd say, far from maturity, but is, is evolving very well is Wi-Fi heat mapping. This is an example of some access points distributed randomly, not randomly, <laughs> planned in a shopping center. And, uh, and, and what is done with that is you basically count where do people move, how do people move around. And you do that purely by looking at the data that your Wi-Fi access point collects. You analyze the data, and you develop something like heat maps. Okay? This is a shopping center. You've seen before what we have in Paris. We have a very dense coverage. We're not doing this. We're not doing heat mapping. But I've heard this morning about ways. I mean, there is a lot of power in collecting data. We collect a lot of data as well, only by people who connect to our Wi-Fi or do not connect to our Wi-Fi, are in reach of the Wi-Fi. That's one of the things we, we, th we, we actually picked one as fun. We picked a, a smaller segment. We picked small and medium restaurants. Okay? The phone concept is about you share your Wi-Fi and you get internet access. That's the phone concept you sh for residentials. But we also developed a product now that is for uh, small and medium stores, the mom and pop shops. Right? And they give Wi-Fi because they need to give Wi-Fi. And until now, you go into any restaurants here in Barcelona, and they will give you a password. Right? They will give you a 17-digit password where you type and you, you maybe get access or not or they completely open it up, which has all the security flaws and all that. It's crazy. You know, we, we developed a very simple way to basically not just to, to, to give Wi-Fi, but to also uh, connect with your customers. So we have a fully customized Wi-Fi experience, very easy. You go into a setup console. You can customize your Wi-Fi experience for the shop, three clicks, literally, and you, it's, it's very simple. And what you then get is when people connect with email, with social media, with whatever credentials they can choose, you have a lot of information. Right? You can use that information to not only give internet access, but to, to run a better store. Right? We, we can compare, let's say, a chain of five different, ten different locations, and we do that. We can tell them, look, this bank location has a lot more traffic at 9 a.m. than this bank location. Traffic meaning people being in the store, not people walking by, people being in the store, and we can tell them they stay on average in this bank location 10 minutes and the other bank location 8. Right? Now, we cannot optimize your business, but we can provide you a lot of information to optimize your business, purely based on this technology. By connecting with Facebook, we allow then the shop owner to do a lot of things on the social media side as well. So just think of your shop owner. You can say, okay, these people connected to my, to my shop. I'll send all of them a Facebook promotion simply by knowing who connected to the Wi-Fi. Um, and the other product, so this is, this is one, and, and there will be a lot of development still in this area. Right? There will be a lot, not just us. There's a whole ecosystem evolving around this. But this here touches upon Internet of Things, okay? and there is conferences about that separately. Uh, Wi-Fi will be a standard. No doubt. We have absolutely no doubt that Wi-Fi will be a key standard there. There's other lower energy technologies as well, but you've seen it all. We've picked, we as fun, we've picked one vertical um, because we're social Wi-Fi. So we thought, what's, what do we all do apart from using Wi-Fi? Well, we all listen to music, right? There's other things we all do, but we picked one vertically. We listen to music. And we said, what can we do with Wi-Fi combining music? And that's when we came up with this product here. And that's the gramophone, as we call it. Uh, if you ask what does that have to do with phone, it's using the same technology. It's using a, a lot of the same concept, concepts. And it's using the, the, the love for, what we say, sharing, okay, and the joint experience. 
we went to Kickstarter with this product. We came with an idea and said, well, look, we all have Wi-Fi at home, but, uh, and we all listen to music. But the problem is, how do I get my music to my existing stereo? Okay? I have Spotify, I have Rhapsody, I have all kinds of cloud music services. Okay? We listen to music. We and kids listen to music on their phones. Right? Now we go home and plug the phone in and listen to the music on the stereo via the phone. The phone rings. I need to go and pick up my phone. Right? It's kind of a crappy experience. So we've developed this here, which is a normal phone hotspot. Okay? We've actually separated it as well. It's also not a phone hotspot, so it does both things. And, um, and um, we added the sound output to it, an audio output. Then you take your the user experiences. We worked with Spotify on this. You plug this into your existing stereo. And um, you have your phone, and you play your music, say, play via gramophone. Then the music comes from your existing stereo right? with Wi-Fi. You set it up with Wi-Fi. So when you walk around, when you walk away, and it's not Bluetooth, if you walk away with your phone or you make a phone call, the music still continues to stream. Okay? So it's kind of like a, it's, a, it's a cloud music player for existing stereos. You can combine two different routers or two different stereos, so it becomes like a multi-room experience, and you can play all kinds of different music services on top of it. We went on Kickstarter. We received tremendous support. We went with a story already that was, look, we're going to launch with Spotify. Okay? But we can evolve. We don't only want to be, uh, limit our, our, our users to Spotify. It's been a wonderful uh, six months. We, we launched the product. It's been great. Uh, but now we're ready to, to actually, uh, this week, this specific week, we're, we're upgrading already first routers with a system called AllPlay. Uh, it's from Qualcomm. That will allow us to bring on board a lot of different music services and, uh, and makes the integration with different rooms a lot easier. Uh, when you go to the AllPlay booth, uh, the Qualcomm Blue booth, uh, they, will, they will demo this and, and um, part of the experience there. This is de facto an announcement today that we will be uh, uh, able to ship the first units beginning of April. If you go on our webpage or you go on our booth outside there, you can already test it, you can check it um, and, um, and get a first feel for what it is like using Wi-Fi for smarter things only than for, for internet connectivity. I ran, it, does, it doesn't have a negative counter, I think I ran like five minutes over my time. Uh, just as a closing note, what we do at FOM is we build the community, but really we invite other companies that are in the ecosystem to reach out to us because we don't want to own the ecosystem. We want to work with other companies to build that ecosystem together. So with that, I thank you very much. If you have any questions, we have a booth outside here, or my name is alex.fond.com, and you can just email me anytime. Thank you.